Recoil is a new state management library for React. It's minimal and React-ish, like the website says, and in practice it looks a lot like using the normal use state hooks, but with a couple nice little touches that make it easier to understand how data is flowing through your application. Importantly, it's not necessarily a Facebook project. As Dan Abramov said on Twitter, Recoil is not in any way an official state management library for React. And neither is, or ever was, Redux. The only official state library for React is React itself. In this video, I'll help you understand how Recoil works, and we'll get started with Recoil by building a brief little application. It just lets you explore trending GitHub repositories. Of course, the source for this project will be available on GitHub, and I'll make sure to put a link to that in the description. To get started, I'll make a new application using Create React App. So I'll run npx create react app, and then just give my project name. Here I'll call it recoil tutorial. Next, I'll add a use effect hook, and this will run when the component renders for the first time. I'll just set up an async function called get repos. And to start, I'm just gonna make a fetch request to this trending repositories API. I'll link to that in the description. For now, I'll just console log the body out from that API request. Next, I'll add Recoil to my project using yarn add Recoil. Inside the root component of my application for Create React App, this is index.js, I'll import the Recoil root component and wrap my app component inside of it. This means that any component further down in the component tree inside of app will be able to access data inside of my Recoil state. With the recoil root configured in my project, it's time to set up my first piece of state. I'll import Atom and use recoil state from the recoil package, and I'll set up my repo state Atom, which represents a piece of state, passing in the key repos and a default, which is just an empty array. To actually use the state inside of my component, I'll use use recoil state, which is a lot like the use state hook. So I'll set two variables, repos and set repos. Just like with a normal use state hook, we destructure these out of use recoil state. And inside of use recoil state, I'll just pass in that repo state atom that I set up earlier. Now down on my use effect, if I wanna actually persist the response from my JSON API request, I'll just call set repos and pass in body. With my repo state set up, I can then go down to the return part of my component and map through those repos, rendering a pretty simple set of JSX that represents some information about each trending repo. Note that your application will look like this. It's gonna look pretty basic, but if you go and look at the source for the project, I've added some more CSS designed to kind of mimic GitHub's UI using primer.css that should look a little bit more repo-like if you're familiar with the GitHub UI. As it stands now, our repos are rendering, but there actually are a number of different views inside of this API. For instance, instead of just looking at monthly trending repos, I can also look at daily or weekly. And to actually implement that, we're gonna add another atom called view, which is just a simple string. So the key of this, which will be the kind of internal reference for this piece of state and recoil will be view. And the default will be what we've been using up until now, which is monthly. Now, this is probably the first thing that actually ends up looking different than how you've used the normal use state hooks in React so far. We're going to import use recoil value, which is a different hook that allows read only access to your state inside of recoil. So down in the component, we'll say const view equals use recoil value, passing in the view atom. And when we actually go inside of this get repos function and pass in the sense param, we can replace the hard coded monthly view with the value of our view atom state. The array that is the second argument to use effect, which tells the effect when it needs to run, should now accept a view argument which says each time that view changes, this use effect function should be called again. With our view set up, we actually need a way to flip through the interface. So maybe we'll make a menu that allows us to click between trending daily, weekly, and monthly. And to do that, we're gonna create a new menu component. 
and also do a little bit of refactoring so that our atoms, our pieces of state, are accessible between multiple components. To do this, I'll delete both of my atoms from inside of app.js, and I'll move them into a new file called atoms.js. Inside of that, I'll just re-import the atom function, and then I'll set up repos and view, exporting them both so they can be imported back inside of app.js. Here, I'll just import them, and then using the as statement, I'll call them repos atom and view atom. Once I've done that, I can remove the atom import and I'll just reconfigure the variable I'm passing in to use recoil state to make sure I'm using the right variable. In menu.js, I'm going to set up a menu component that allows me to switch between the different views using a simple kind of link format. To do this, I'm going to import use recoil state and I'm going to also import the view atom from my atoms.js file. Inside of the actual component, I'll set up a view options array, which is just a list of the possible views that you can switch between. Um, in this case, it's just daily, weekly, and monthly. Inside of the actual render part of the component where we write JSX, I'll just loop through that view options and I'll just make sure that I return a link and the link will have a specific active class if we're currently looking at that view. And when you click each of the views, we'll use set view to update the view for the rest of the application. And so when we do this, clicking each of these links will make it so that the application updates and gets a new list of repos. Back inside of app.js, I'll just pull the menu component in and I'll make sure to render it inside of my component tree. And this is where recoil.js really shines. You can see that I'm not actually passing in any props into the menu component, but I'm still able to both read and write from both the repos and the view pieces of atom state without needing to kind of pass it around or do the usual sort of really deeply nested props passing that a lot of people write with React. In my UI, I can click back and forth and I can see that there are a new set of repos being generated and being rendered in the UI. You'll notice if you look at the UI really closely that there's a little bit of flickering, which is happening because we're actually replacing the entire array of trending repos each time we change the view. To fix that, I'm going to update the structure of the repo state turning it into an object, and each key will be the view, that is daily, weekly, or monthly. And then back in my get repos function, I'll just make sure to change it so that each time a new API request comes in, I just update the specific key inside of my state. Down in the render function, I'll just update instead of cycling through repos, I'll make sure to actually loop through the view, that is the specific key, inside of repos. This will make it a little bit more performant. It does a little bit less re-rendering just in case there is an identical key between the two different sets of repo arrays, but it'll also make it so that some data stays cached. That is, when I change the view, uh, there will already be a set of repos if you've already made that request for, say, monthly trending repos or weekly, etc. Overall, my initial impressions of Recoil is that it's a really straightforward UI, and in particular, I like the idea of separating read-only and read-slash-write usage of your atom state into two different hooks. I think it's a really interesting pattern, and I don't feel like it's a ton of overhead to use instead of, say, using use state or using a context. It's kind of a simplified way to access all of that stuff without needing to be uh, you know, a hooks expert. So if you're looking for something new to mess around with in the constantly changing world of React state management, I think Recoil is a pretty cool nifty tool that you can add to your toolbox. One last thing I'll say is that there is a conference video by the creator of Recoil.js. It was actually announced during that video. So if you want to hear a little bit more about the motivations and about how Recoil works, you can watch that video. I'll link to the open source code base for this tutorial on GitHub in the description as well. And it's worth mentioning, it's actually been a little bit since I recorded the first draft of this video, and I imagine since then there's been a lot of new recoil hooks and changes and updates to the project. You should also just go check out the documentation, and I imagine there'll be some new nifty things for you to explore there. 
Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you liked the video and found it useful and see you in the next video.